controversy is director Oliver Stone's middle name. Now his son may be following in his own footsteps. Sean Stone made headlines recently with reports that he's converted to Islam and he's been defending Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the Iranian president. Sean Stone joins me now to explain why. Uh, Sean, welcome. You've been taking a lot of flack for all this. Uh, I, I suppose my first thought was, what was your father's reaction as a Jewish legendary Hollywood producer when you told him that you were going to be converting to Islam and doing it in Iran? Be honest. Honestly, I explained that, you know, I feel like I'm trying to create a dialogue and end this clash of civilization. Clash of civilization is nonsense. We've heard this motto, especially since the 1990s in particular, um, and this conception that Jews and Muslims and Christians cannot live in harmony. And I want to end that, uh, that rhetoric and say, I'm a Jewish Christian Muslim. Um, I want to be able to understand all three religions and have a dialogue with people from all, all across the board and say, we don't need to fight each other based on the book. Right, so what, what did your father say to that? Uh, he said, Allah be with you. Really? Yeah. I mean, I said it's... Your father I, said that? My father made Alexander the Great, don't forget, who was a great uh, unifier of peoples. You know, Alexander went as a Greek to, uh, to Persia, and he took over the Persian Empire, became their leader, their great king, and he married Greek and Persians, and he was trying to incorporate the, the cultures and elevate mankind as a whole. So I think he gets that. But, but you know, I, I, again, I come back to the fact your father is a very famous Jewish Hollywood producer. He now has a son who has been meeting with President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad, as you know, and I've checked the exact quotes because often they get misquoted, is on record as saying on September the 18th, 2009, he said the following, the Holocaust is a lie based on an unprovable and mythical claim. He went on, they, the Western powers, launched the myth of the Holocaust, they lied, they put on a show, and then they support the Jews. I mean, it seems very perverse that you would wish to spend much time with this guy, given your family upbringing. Well, I saw many Orthodox Jews when I was in the country, too. And, uh, you know, a lot of Orthodox Jews are opposed to the state of Israel, um, you know, in its own, in its right. Uh, whether or not uh, he, as I said, I, wanted to, I want to clarify his position regarding the Holocaust, which is to say, regardless if he, if he believes it or not, it does not justify, to our thinking at least, the occupation of the West Bank and the fact that the Palestinian situation has not been resolved in that region. And why are people not having this dialogue anymore? You know, if we really want to clarify that, why don't we just take it to him and say, look, let's start a proposal. Let's talk to all the Middle Eastern countries and go back to the Camp David style accords. Why is this not happening? You know, uh, this is the essence of what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to defend whether or not he believes in the Holocaust. I don't care if he believes in the Holocaust. I don't want to see our country you go met to war. Him, when when you met him, did you bring up this denial of the Holocaust that he keeps uh, purporting? No, actually, I asked him more about the nuclear bomb issue, and he said no bomb. Um, my issue really is, is I don't want to see our country go to war. And, you know, if it's going to be over the potential threat that Iran is to Israel, I would say that's a complete lie. And the most, you know, we are in a very dangerous situation, precarious situation right now, if Israel gets the green light and attacks preemptively Iran the way that we preemptively attacked Iraq. That's what I'm most concerned about. Do you, but you, you said yesterday, I think, that you believed that Iran should have the right to develop a nuclear weapon. Do you stand by that? Yes, this has to do with nuclear power. You see, I believe in nuclear energy and this, the sovereignty of nation states. We have to go back to the Treaty of Westphalia. If Iran has the right to develop nuclear energy, then, of course, there's going to be the question of will they then take it and develop nuclear bombs. Now, based on the preventive war doctrine established by Bush, if we allege that they are developing nuclear bombs, then we can just allege it and attack them. So it doesn't matter at that point, you see, if they, whether or not they're actually intending to build it. I'm trying to negate the, the preventive war doctrine and negate it by saying, okay, they have a right to it, and at least as a defensive mechanism, and within their sovereign borders. If they were to ever use it on anybody, of course there would be nuclear holocaust. Um, there would be no reason, because if you see Tehran, it's a city of 16 million people. Okay, it's twice the size of New York City. The capital of the country is there. One, one, one radical uh, Iranian bomb going off. You don't think there would be hundreds of Israeli bombs firing at Tehran? I mean, it's it's over. There's no well, I reason. Suppose, I suppose the, the, the problem is that you're you're considering that Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is a, ma a man of sane mind, and you know when you look at some of the other things he's said and about 
9-11. Some segments within the American government orchestrated the attack to reverse the declining American economy and its grips on the Middle East in order to save the Zionist regime. I mean, it's obvious complete claptrap. So I guess when people, you know, Americans who are patriotic, who maybe love your father's movies and so on, when they see you going over there, you know, I don't have any problem with you converting to Islam. It's absolutely your right to do that. And I have no issue with that at all. Or indeed you visiting Iran. Where I slightly have an agitation about what you're up to is the kind of positioning you're putting yourself in looks like you're defending the indefensible. Okay, currently I would say we're in a very dangerous situation. If Israel, for example, decides to attack Iran preventively, uh, preventively Russia is not going to stand by and let this happen. They've already voiced their opinion. They do not want to see a war because this is on their border. It would be like a country in invading Mexico. You know, we, it would destabilize this region. It would blow Iran up the same way Iraq was blown up, the same way Syria is being blown up right now. What you do is you're going to radicalize the, Sun the Sunni and Shiite divisions even more. You're going to create a Lebanon situation of the 80s, the Afghanistan situation of the 80s. You're going to recreate it now. Okay, and that's going to create even more terrorism across the world, not just the region. This is potentially World War III that we're looking at. That's what I'm most yeah, but of course, of. You know, the, the, yeah, but the argument, of course, if you're in Israel, is that they could be facing potentially World War III from somebody that they see as completely unstable for some of the reasons I've stated with these statements he's made on the record, particularly in relation to Israel, and they worry that if he is in possession of a nuclear weapon, he wouldn't hesitate to carry out some of the threats and statements that he's made. And don't they have a right to feel vulnerable about that? So you basically are defending the preventive war doctrine, which goes back to Bush. So, um, frankly... Well, no, no, but no, 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 I don't, I don't actually. And in fact, just to clarify, I would have agreed about the futility of the Iraq war, for example. But in this case, it seems to me that unlike uh, with Saddam Hussein, you actually have Ahmadinejad threatening to exterminate Israel. Where does he threaten? Uh, and he's developing, and he is developing ever faster nuclear capacity. Now that is a matter for concern, isn't it? Well, where, does he, where is he currently threatening to destroy Israel? That is my question. Well, he's made statements which allude to that in the past. Allude to it, okay. The dissolution of the Israeli state. That's like saying we want the dissolution of the Soviet Union. It doesn't mean anyone's going to launch nuclear weapons to achieve it. You can do it through other means. Dialogue is an important, dis uh, important path. For example, if you want to solve the situation, we should have dialogue with these countries again. We need to have a dialogue regarding the Israel-Palestine problem, the two-state solution, for example. We need to clarify. Also, the president does not rule this country as a dictator. It's not an autocracy. It's a republic. There's a supreme leader that he answers to. There's a parliament that he's, that he's going before in the, at this point in time to answer for corruption charges. So there's, it, it's very much like this country. Now, if you think one man, because uh, I've heard, for example, he talks to Jin, you know, genies. I mean, it's like these are the kind of allegations we get because he's lunatic, he's going to go and, and, and commit national suicide for a country that has a very proud tradition of the revolution going by 33 years that I saw rallies, demonstrations in the millions for. I mean, what may, there's no credibility to this report. This is just rumors. You're warmongering. You're spreading, you're spreading rumors at this point. Well, that's certainly an opinion, Sean Stone, and I respect your opinion. I think I disagree with most of it, and many others will, but I respect you for having it. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Pierce.